What's up traders? In today's video, I'll be showing you how I managed to get involved in this counter trend buying opportunity on GBPUSD this past Friday. So stay tuned. Now to kick things off, I just want to remind you guys again of that simplified SMC setup that I like to trade. Essentially, as I've said in previous videos, this approach to trading is a trend following strategy. So what that means is it all starts out with identifying your underlying trend. All right. In this particular markup, we have bearish price action in here. The overall structure is bearish. We've got price action putting in these lower highs or these lower lows rather. And we've also got price action putting in these lower highs. So the theory states that after we get a valid break of structure to the downside, we want to wait for that new lower low to form. All right. After that new lower low forms, we want to wait for a pullback into premium pricing, which would obviously now be regarded as a high value area for us to look for potential bearish continuations from. We want to see price action mitigating a well priced supply zone that sits within that premium priced zone. Understand that that zone could also be at the equilibrium. Once we get that mitigation, we want to see our entry criteria met and then we would like to look for that bearish continuation. Right. It's as simple as that. Now, understand that after price action puts in that new low, we are obviously anticipating a pullback. And while price action is in that pullback phase, we can look for potential counter trend buying opportunities during that pullback phase, which is exactly what we were able to do in this particular trade that we caught on Friday. All right. So while we are anticipating price action to pull back in here for the bearish continuation, we understand that we have an opportunity to get involved in buys because taking cells down here below our equilibrium would, would not be regarded as well priced. OK, now, one thing that I personally like to do after price action forms that new low is I like to mark out my weak low and I like to mark out my strong high. Now, I regard this as a strong high because it did its job. It created a new low. It led to the break of structure of a previous major swing point or of an external structure swing point. And the reason I regard this as a weak low is because based on the theory, based on the approach after price action pulls back into premium pricing, we are anticipating bearish continuation. We're anticipating another bearish break of structure. We're anticipating price action to form a, a new lower low. So therefore, this is regarded as weak. All right. So once I mark those two levels out, I know that everything contained within this particular range is going to be regarded as internal structure, essentially. And my range will only progress once one of these levels have been violated. All right. So if we look at GBP USD now on the four hour chart, and this is the most recent price action that we've just had this past week, we can see the price action more recently has been in a bearish trend. We've been putting in these lower lows and we can obviously see that we've also been putting in these lower highs. Now, at the start of the trading day on Friday, we had our most recent bearish break of structure that happened in here. And this is the point where I'd like to bring on my bar replay tool and I'd like us to have a quick look at how price action developed after this particular break of structure in here. All right. So keeping in mind the simplified setup that I just showed you guys. All right. After we have a bearish break of structure to the downside, we're obviously anticipating a new low to form. And then we want to see that pullback into premium pricing before we get that continuation. Now, in this particular market context, we just so happen to have a valid previously unmitigated four hour demand zone that price action is currently approaching. Now, as price action is approaching this particular four hour demand zone, we can already start thinking to ourselves that this would be a very nice area to see the formation of that potential new four hour low. All right. Now, I use my four hour to get my directional bias for my intraday trading opportunities. So what do I mean by that? At this particular point, after seeing the four hour break of structure, I am waiting for price action to mitigate the zone. And after that mitigation, 
I want to go down onto my lower time frame and I, and I am anticipating, all right, I am anticipating the four hour pullback. So my directional bias is now going to be bullish after price action obviously mitigates this four hour zone and we get a valid change of character that confirms the new low for me, all right? Now, after I've done my analysis here on the four hour chart, what I like to do is I like to go onto the one hour chart just to see if there's any um, refinement that can be done. And the most important refinement that I wanted to point out for the purpose of this particular video is going to be this one hour demand zone in here, which is essentially a refined zone that sits within the larger four hour demand. And I just wanted to point it out for you guys. It essentially starts at this particular candle in here on the 6th of January, 2023. We have a slightly smaller one hour demand zone further down, which is also valid, which I also marked out. So at this particular point, as price action is approaching these two zones, I am telling myself that I would like to wait for price action to interact with either one of these zones. And then I want to wait for that change of character to confirm the new low. Once that new low is confirmed, I would like to look for potential counter trend buying opportunities, right? So we drop down now to our 15 minute chart and this is where the magic happens, right? So as you can see, we've pulled price action back. We now have price action trading within the Asian session. Also notice how my 15 minute chart is also pointing bull is also pointing bearish at this particular point in time. We've got price action putting in lower lows. We've also got price action putting in lower highs in here. And we, much like the four hour chart, we have seen our most recent bearish break of structure coming into Friday, the 17th of February, right? So at this particular point, obviously I'm not at my charts, but essentially what we're looking for is waiting for price action to pull into what would now be that refined one hour zone or that one hour demand zone, right? We want to look for price action to trade into that. And then we want to wait for price action to confirm the low. Notice how after the 15 minute break of structure to the downside, price action is still trending bearish, all right? Now at this particular point in time, I'm not looking to take any trades. I am waiting for my new 15 minute lower low to form because once that lower low forms, then I have my established bearish range on the 15 minute chart and then I can start looking for trading opportunities, right? Obviously, after the break of structure, you can look for potential trend continuation trades, all right? But the reason I don't like doing that is because a lot of times after your break of structure, you would have been in a prolonged existing trend already. So you'll end up taking trades at the end of potentially exhausted price action. So that's why I just like waiting for the low to form. So during the course of the Asian session, you can see the price action is still continuing bearish after that bearish break of structure on the 15 minute chart. As we're approaching the London open, what I'd like to see is, and you can see that we have, you can see that we have that one hour, that refined one hour demand zone. We can see the price action is now hovering just above that zone. What I'd like to see is, I'd like to see the London open, all right, tap into the zone. After we tap into that zone, I'd like to see a 15 minute change of character to confirm the new 15 minute low. And after that, I can start looking for counter trend buying opportunities. All right. So if we continue playing price action forward now, we can see that at this particular point, we've got the London open coming in and you can see the amount of volume that London open tends to come with. All right. We get price action now tapping into that one hour demand zone. And this is where we start waiting for that new 15 minute low to form. All right. So if we continue playing price action forward ever so slightly, you can see that at this particular point, all right, at this particular point, this is where we have now had our 15 minute change of character just in there. So that 15 minute change of character now confirms the 15 minute low. So once I have that 15 minute low, you'll notice that I have my 15 minute strong high marked out up here. I have my 15 minute weak low marked out up here. And what are we anticipating? We are now anticipating a bullish pullback on this particular range. Now, I would like to remind you that at this particular point, I have gotten my directional bias from the four hour. Okay. 
if I just very quickly hop back out to the four hour, notice how price action has now tapped into that four hour demand zone, okay? At this particular point, I have seen the 15 minute change character from bearish to bullish, which has confirmed that 15 minute low for me. So now I can just focus on the 15 minute chart and I can trade what I am seeing on the 15 minute chart. What I mean by that is because I have this 15 minute bearish range, okay, I am only going to be looking to trade counter trend buys up until price action reaches either the equilibrium or something well priced in premium pricing. Now I already have a 15 minute supply zone marked out in here. You can see it's a very valid um, supply zone to look for because you have the imbalance you obviously have the nice liquidity that sits just below it, and it also sits within premium pricing. So straight off the bat, any counter trend buys that I'm looking to take, I'm only going to be aiming for this particular 15 minute supply zone. Now, I don't trade change of character on its own. I like to wait for the confirmation. I like to wait for a secondary break of structure after the change of character has taken place before I look for my entry all right and the reason i do this is because the fact that your lower time frames move a bit faster than your higher time frames they can print some false signals at times so i like to wait for that second break of structure so what that essentially looks like is we have our 15 minute change of character in here price action pushes up we then have price action pulling back with this large candle which means that this would be the next point that i would like to see violated in order to give me that second break of structure to the upside, right? After my change of character has taken place. And at this particular point, this is where I get my second break of structure to the upside. So after I get that second break of structure to the upside, I now, that, I now know that this is the 15 minute demand zone that I would like to trade from because this is the demand zone that led to that second break of structure. And essentially, I would now like to see price action pulling back to this particular zone and I'd like to see price action pulling, pushing higher, all right? Now, this is an entry model that I have spoken about previously and I have made a video about it, which you can find on my channel. It is called the How to Enter a Trade Using Smart Money Concepts uh, video. Um, I posted it about seven months ago, really, really good video, breaking down that confirmation entry model when you have seen your change of character after the mitigation of a higher time frame POI. All right, so I highly suggest you guys go ahead and check out that video as well. So getting back to our trade breakdown video, we now have that second break of structure to the upside. We now have a valid 15 minute demand zone that has formed. We can see the imbalance that sits just above it. And we've also got that little bit of liquidity that has now built up just above that demand zone. At this particular point in time, I am now anticipating price action to pull back to mitigate this particular 15, this 15 minute demand zone. And then I'd like to see continuation, all right? Now, what am I doing for targets? Obviously, and if I go back out to the four hour chart, all right, very quickly. Obviously, from a four hour point of view, you wanna be aiming for your premium pricing, okay? That's realistically what you'd wanna do. But because this is an intraday trade for me, because I'm not looking to swing this particular trade and because I'm not executing it on the four hour chart, I am only going to place my targets and I'm going to be trading relative to the 15 minute chart and relative to this 15 minute bearish range. So even though I've got a lot of potential upside in terms of my four hour chart, all right, I am only trading this 15 minute setup. So I'm gonna be aiming for a well-priced zone that sits within premium pricing of the bearish range, okay? So my targets are going to be the open of this 15 minute supply. You can see that we're gonna be catching some nice liquidity on our way there as well. So if we play price action forward ever so slightly, you can see that we have a, a very, very small period of consolidation as price action builds up that liquidity just above my zone. This is something else that can give you a little bit more confidence. If you see that liquidity building up, it won't always happen. Um, sometimes you'll just have the one candle acting as inducement, but whenever you see something like this, this is another awesome indication that your zone could really be a high probability zone to trade from over and above having the higher time frame POI over and above having your 
second break of structure confirmation, all right? So as soon as I see this buildup of liquidity, I go ahead and I place my buy limit order at the midpoint of this 15 minute demand zone. I have my stop loss placed 10 pips away and I've got my target placed at the open of that 15 minute supply. So for this particular setup, I'm looking at a one to 5.6 hour trade, right? And if we continue playing price action forward, we can see the price action then swoops down, all right? We grab a little bit more liquidity. We have an initial tap into the 15 minute zone. At this particular point, I'm not too worried about it because I have already told myself at which point I would like to get involved in and I'm not going to be executing at market. So as we continue price action forward, we can see that we have a very nice, very deep mitigation of the 15 minute demand. Sometimes this particular setup will break down much like any approach, much like any entry model, you won't have a 100% win rate, you won't have 100% execution. Sometimes they do fail. On this particular occasion, we get a nice deep mitigation, but the zone ends up holding. We've given it a lot of room to breathe in terms of our stop loss placement. And now after we get tagged into the particular trade, we already mark out our break even point. Now what exactly is a break even point? This is essentially a price point where I will look to take partials and where I will move my stops to break even. And essentially, it is the last point before price action tapped me into a trade, all right? It's, it's essentially the last high or low, depending on the setup, before price action taps me into the trade, all right? So then after that, we continue playing price action forward. You can see that we get a very nice, very strong bullish reaction to that 15 minute zone. Within almost an hour, my break even point is reached okay so at this particular point i close 50 percent of my position i move my stops to break even and obviously now it's just the case of letting price action run to see whether or not it can reach target and if we continue price action on you can see that this is the point where the new york session opens we get another injection of bullish momentum price action shoots up towards our target and we're taken out of the trade with the remaining 50% of my position reaching full take, uh, reaching full take profit, all right? So very, very clean trade. If you guys enjoyed the video, please make sure that you give it a like, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any future content. As always, I really appreciate you guys uh, for watching. I'll see you in the next one.